So when did you start to realize it was true? That it was true that she died, that she's gone. Yeah. A year later. There were moments, like the very next day of this day, um, I, I had slept in my, my dad's house and I woke up the next morning and um, I just I woke up crying. That was the first time I ever experienced that. And my dad turned around and all he did was uh, hug. I think that made me realize that maybe Okay, maybe it is true because why would he hold me like that? And then we woke up and then uh, this was day by he was holding transfer. And then I think my granny was making breakfast and stuff and then people were phoning her. And I could hear, only hear the one side of the conversation. And uh, she was telling whoever had phoned. Uh, yeah, she's okay. You know, something like that. And then she says, uh, she was saying this person that I had woken up that morning crying and Mark, my dad was like holding me. So she was basically telling them, you know, what had what happened. So that again, yeah, like a little piece, a little piece, a little piece, like makes a little bit true-ish. Uh, but I didn't believe it in my soul until, until one day I realized that she wasn't coming back. Yeah. Because you even went to Facebook when that came about much later and searched for it, thinking... Yeah. Like, on the funeral day, I was very... Um, which was still four days away. Because they had to, like, fly her body from Johannesburg to Durban. Uh, and by the time they had all these arrangements and stuff to do, we could only have the funeral on the, the Tuesday. Which was so weird because the job she had applied for, she had gotten the job on the Tuesday. They phoned to say, yeah, you got the job. And someone had to say, yeah, she's got Oh. Yeah. There's a job at McDonald's. She was working at KFC head office. McDonald's had just come to South Africa. So she applied there because their first branch was in Joburg. And she wanted to be in Joburg to get away from Andre. Oh, okay. And Ansela was already living here. So you would have probably moved up then. Then, yeah. 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 The first branch of... Uh, or franchise of McDonald's opening in South Africa was in Joburg. And that's the one she went to. Oh, okay. yeah, and she got the job on that Tuesday. So anyway, the funeral was the Tuesday. And uh, I remember I stayed by my dad's house, of course. Um, and I had zero appetite. Zero appetite. But even before then, before then, because we didn't have clothes. I didn't have clothes and I didn't have anything black to wear. So it was either that Sunday or that Monday. Um, they took us, I can't remember who, but took us to my home in Morningside where she and I stayed. Because um, my fish tank was there. And, uh, well, our life was there. And... Uh, they asked me to look for something black to wear. And I didn't have anything, so I took one of her outfits. Um, and that fit you okay? Well, it was a bit big. She, I mean, I was 12. Yeah, so <laughs> you were 12. And... But she was petite. Yeah. She was very... She was very... We shared the same leather jacket. My dad went to Egypt for work this one time, and he bought us uh, leather jackets. And she loved mine so much that she took mine away. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even together. <laughs> like, he was just kind of bought a gift. She took it. Like, I was like, woman. <laughs> um, yeah, imagine that. She was wearing a 12 year old girl's jacket. Like. <laughs> yeah. So she was very smart. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we went to Morningside. Uh, I don't even remember what happened to our stuff and how things, like, I don't know. I just remember, like, the hi-fi that I spoke about earlier that she bought. 
and the sleeping couch well our couches and stuff like the furniture and that ended up they, they didn't ask me where it should all go and i was like just give it to my grandparents because it's their child you know mm. what i mean i have no home to put it in wait and then there was another point that added to maybe this was true was when her body arrived in durban uh I think after the four boys and my dad went to identify the body, they like brought her clothes and stuff. And so the clothes that she had passed away with um, was in a packet in the boot. And I had opened up the boot um, and I saw that. Her clothes? Yeah, that she died she- in. Because once you go, I think once the autopsy and that is supposed to be done, and then you give them a new set of clothes to change the body to for the funeral, uh, they discard. I don't know what they do with the current clothes, the one you actually die in. Yeah, so her, that those clothes were, were in a packet. I remember them saying that there was urine on it, so she had she had peed in the in the accident. Yeah, I think it's very common in this, in this kind of situation. There's also horrific stories. You know, sometimes, huh? You know, sometimes people need to just need to watch them. Their mouth. They just need to watch. There were stories going on. Now, this is happening between that Saturday that I found out that when it happened and the Tuesday of the funeral. There were stories that went about as to how the accident happened. People don't think how they speak and who they speak in front of. And they just, they just don't. Um, but, like, they, I, I heard things like, uh, she was screaming. Now you're putting thoughts like this in a 12-year-old girl's head of the only human being that she's ever been around for the past 12 years. You know what I'm saying? So they say she was screaming. Uh, you know, like screaming for dear life. And how would they know? And that's why I'm such a factual person now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because how do you know? know? Give me proof. Give me proof. Um... So there was that. They said that there was a horse and trailer that hit into the car, so there was no chance of survival whatsoever. Uh, totally horseshit, because I saw the accident in, in the company that I worked for many years later. You know what I mean? Because the accident was there. I read what happened. Um, they said that uh, something about a horse and trailer. There was like so many stories about a horse and trailer, right? Which uh, is all rubbish. Which was all rubbish, all rubbish. Um, I do know for a fact because the the one auntie, Auntie Naomi, she's uh, my granny's sister-in-law. She uh, had a sister to bath my mom um, and she was honest and open because I told her be honest and open with me. Uh, she's no longer here and just the other day i had commented because her daughter had posted on facebook like how much they must have and this, those were the exact words that i said was that i'll ever be so grateful to to this auntie because she was honest enough and she told me she says because uh, i told her to tell me everything that was wrong and she told me the arms are dis- dislocated the jaw her jaw was dislocated uh and something else I think I stopped listening after that. Um, you know, so I understand that chances of survival are slim tonight. Right. Yes. Um, the report, and a lot of people verified that her neck had broke instantly. So there again, I, I verified in my own brain that you can't survive this. I understand that, you know, due to the circumstances. So let's start with a few days before the accident actually happened. So, we know that you didn't want your mom to go there, um, but, no, well. yeah, so start from a few days before, how were things between you and your mom, what was going on? Well, things were great, <laughs> things were always great. Um, so it was like a Thursday, if my memory serves me correctly, and Tammy came home. So Tammy had a double piercing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was like an in thing at the time. And my mother would never allow me. My, my mother never allowed me to like tint my hair, like change my hair color or do anything of that sort. Wear makeup or anything. Like I could paint my nails, but that was it because it goes to your nails. 
but like no makeup or anything because that's her skin. She thought I was too young. Okay. Um. So <laughs> I really wanted this piercing. I wanna say really, really wanted it. Like I was a bit scared because like you piercing my body, but like I wanted to be in the in. Yeah. You know what I mean with the with the with the your friend latest trends. You didn't have any. Yes, now I had the normal ones that is child they pierce, but like the second double, you know, it was in thing. It was in fashion, um, and she she told me I don't know if it was just ways to get me to go do good in school or whatever, but she like told me okay if you do if you do well if you come in the first three, uh, the first one was that she'd buy me a bike, and I did and I didn't get the bike, uh, but I understood. Because I understood her finances at the time, right? Then the second time she said, "Okay, fine." Because I never, I've never been uh, at that time. I was never in an airplane. Um, so I said, "Okay." Uh, she said that if I if I do well in school, she'll send me an airplane. She sent me to Cape Town because uh, her friend, family member Nicola lived there. Um, so I was like, "Great!" And I did well, and she never sent me. But I think in the back of my mind, I knew that I wasn't going to get that. <laughs> so now this was my perfect chance to manipulate her and say, hey, you promised me all these things and you didn't give it. And I I did my part. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I really want this. Like, I really want this. So you you can't. How, how are you going to say no? You can't say no. Yeah. How are you going to say no? So she gave. She gave. <laughs> <laughs> she gave. So then. I think this arrangement was actually made prior, actually. And then Tammy came on Thursday because we were going to go on Thursday to do it. So then th- Tammy came home. Um, and then my mom came home. And then she cooked curry, potato, and peas. Well, potato and peas curry. Uh, and we had red jungle yum juice. Um, and so we ate. But we ate, like, very fast because I was so excited I wanted to go. Because it's night time now. It's like 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she was by the window and she was having a cigarette and she was looking at uh, the sunset. Um, and then she called me for a sec to come and look at it with her. So I went, but like for half a second. I looked. I thought it was pretty. I said, like, okay, I'm done now. Let's go. Um, then she had finished her cigarette. And then the three of us went to Sparksport Pharmacy. And then we... Mutually, I think all three of us chose the earring and then we got it pierced. And then she took, we went and dropped timing off and then we went back home. And then later that night, uh, in bed, because we sleep together in the same bed, it was just two of us. Um, and so she was teaching me like how to sleep on it because you know, you sleep on your pillow and then see your ears and now it's now red and sore and yeah. everything. So she taught me like how to sleep so I won't. So I can sleep. And then uh, she taught me to like turn it around so it doesn't get stuck, you know. She teach me all nice things. Huh? Uh, so I had to turn it, turn it until it, keep it, until it got healed. And then she said to me that that's a, a lifelong gift. I know that she used the word gift or present, but it's basically a lifelong gift from her to me. 